In this lecture, we are going to talk about capacitor and inductor association in series and parallel, the same as we did for resistor association. First of all, we are going to talk about capacitor. And the capacitor is an element to store energy in the form of electric field. So, these two plates with a certain distance, D, when you apply a voltage, a positive to this terminal and the negative to this other terminal or plates and you separate with a distance with air or some other insulation material in order that they don't get in contact to each other so this element will be called capacitor and will create electric fields from this plate to this plate and this electric field will store energy so after you remove this power source you will have voltage here regenerated by this electric field or stored electric field so when you place a capacitor in direct current it only charges because the current cannot go to this positive to negative due to the characteristics of this element so you will see it when we are calculating the reactance of this capacitor the capacitor needs a frequency in the voltage you apply so DC has no frequency but AC has frequency so when you apply AC you will have the current flowing in the capacitor but when it's DC no current will flow So the basic equation for the capacitor is that the charge, this charge K plus and minus K is equal to the capacitance of this capacitor multiplied by the voltage. So the current in the capacitor is equal to the change in time of the charge. So the change in time of the charge is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the change in voltage because if the capacitor is an element it is already have n capacitance like resistor the resistance cannot change in a resistor so in capacitor the capacitance cannot change if you don't change the distance to change the charge you need to change the voltage First the capacitance are 0 volts. After you apply the voltage the capacitor will start charging and the voltage in its positive terminal will be increasing. So the difference of voltage from positive to this positive plate will decrease in time until the capacitor reaches its maximum voltage that is the voltage applied in these terminals. Using this equation we found that the current is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the change of voltage in time. Another useful equation for the capacitor is the electric field generated. So this electric field is equal to the proportional constant the 9 multiplied by 9 elevated to 9 multiplied by the charge divided by the distance in square. So you have the constant, it's 9 multiplied by 10 elevated to 9 and the charge you can calculate using this equation of capacitance multiplied by the applied voltage and you have the distance so you find the square and you will get the electric field strength. How we place two capacitors in series and other two in parallel and calculate the total or the equivalent capacitance. So if you place two capacitors in series, this is the symbol of capacitor. You, you have the capacitor 1, capacitor 2, and you apply voltage from this terminal to this one. You will have a voltage drop in the capacitors. Let's say the voltage drop in 1, voltage drop in 2, and the current flowing from this terminal to this one will be the same in all the capacitors. So this is the current. So you can say that this total voltage applied is equal to the sum of the voltage 1 and voltage 2. 
because they are in series so if you divide the total voltage by the charge even for this side of equation we are not changing the equation because you can simplify this one this one and this one and go back to the previous equation that is the voltage equal to the sum of the voltages so if you leave the equation like this if you go to this equation and we place the charge in this member and the capacitance in the other member we will have 1 divided by capacitance equals to the voltage divided by the charge so we have this voltage divided by the charge here and we can say that it's equal also to 1 divided by the capacitance so it's equal we do the same for this member and this member of the equation and we have 1 divided because this is the voltage in 1 and the charge in 1 this is the charge in 2 we will have 1 divided by the capacitance 1 plus 1 divided by the capacitance 2 so in other words this is the total capacitance as this was the total voltage you can simplify this circuit to a simple one with this terminal and total equivalent capacitance we say this CT and the voltage applied and the current flowing so another important thing is that the charge is the flow of electrons so it's flowing in the inverse direction of this current so the charge is going in this direction the total charge so if you have the value of the capacitance 1 2 these values are given you can use in this equation and find the total capacitor so you can notice that the total capacitance in series the equation is equal to the total resistance in parallel another way to know that the current will not flow when you apply a DC voltage is in this equation of current because you can see the current depends on the change of voltage in time and DC does not change the voltage in time DC has a constant voltage so the current will not flow in DC only in AC because AC changes the voltage magnitude in time so if we place two capacitors in parallel and if this is the capacitor 1 these two and you apply voltage from this terminal to here a current will flow to here and this current will be divided in a current that goes to the capacitor 1 and the current that goes to the capacitor 2 and after this current divides when they reach this terminal or this node they will sum again and result in the total incoming current we know that when the current is flowing there is electron flow in reverse direction so we have the electrons or the charge going in this direction and when they reach this point they also divide to the charge that goes to the capacitor 1 and the charge that goes to the capacitor 2 so when they reach this node they also sum each other and results in the total incoming so we can see that capacitor 1 charges with a charge 1 and capacitor 2 charges with a charge 2 so if the capacitance are different the charge values are also different we noticed that the total charge is equal to the sum of charge 1 and charge 2 so if we apply the same as we did previous and we divide this by the voltage the total voltage applied and we also divide this by the voltage applied because the voltage in the capacitor 1 is the voltage in this terminal in this one and this is equal to the voltage or the total voltage they are in parallel also if you divide here by the voltage if you simplify these members you can go back to the previous equation so if we take back this equation and we isolate the capacitance and we take the voltage to this member 
we will have the charge divided by the voltage is equal to the capacitance. So we have here a charge divided by voltage. So we change this to capacitance as we did here. So this is equal. We have charge 1 divided by the voltage. So this will give us a certain capacitance that is the capacitance 1 because it's the charge 1 plus the capacitance 2. In this way we are saying that the total capacitance of this circuit because this is the total charge divided by the total voltage we will have a total capacitance is equal to the sum of the capacitance values. So you can simplify this circuit to this one with the total capacitance, the voltage applied, the current flowing and the charge flowing. So this is the total charge, not the charge in one or charge in two. So you can also notice that as we said previously, when you place capacitors in parallel, they act like resistors in series only in equation when you are calculating the total capacitance. So let's see how the inductor works when you apply a voltage. So with the same concept of capacitor, the inductor does not work in DC. So if you place an inductor in direct current, it's a short circuit. It's the same as if you use only a conductor because you will not have voltage drop here so this is the same as connecting directly a conductor to one point to another so never connect an inductor to a DC source it will get shorted so in DC the current is so high so if you feed with an alternate current the change of voltage in time of this alternate current will generate these magnetic flux lines so by definition the voltage drop in the inductance is equal to the inductance multiplied by the change of current in time. If the current does not change in time, the voltage drop will be zero. So this is the same with applying a DC voltage. When you apply a DC voltage to these terminals, the current does not change in time. It's a constant current you will have no change in time so this will be equal to zero and multiplied by the inductance you will have a voltage drop of zero so that means the total current here will go to a short circuit so so if you apply AC to these terminals the current will change so you will don't have a short circuit so let's see how we place two inductors in series so this is the symbol of inductor so you have the inductance 1 and inductance 2 and you apply voltage here a current will flow will be the same in all the inductance and you will have voltage drop in the inductance 1 and 2 so if you sum this voltage to find the total voltage and we know by definition that the voltage is inductance multiplied by the change in current in time so you have here inductance multiplied by the change of current in time and this is equal to the inductance 1 multiplied by change of current in the inductance 1 in time plus inductance 2 multiplied by the change of current in time so simplifying these two members you have inductance is equal to the inductance 1 plus inductance 2 so this is the total inductance of this series connection of inductance so the total series circuit will be simplified to this one the applied voltage and the current flowing so another important equation is the magnetic flux generated when you apply an AC voltage. So this flux is equal to the inductance multiplied by the current flowing in this inductance divided by the number of turns. 
so you have the value of the inductance you have the current value flowing and it's the turn so how you find the turns of an inductor let's see in this inductor we have this one turn to here the complete turn so if you take this line to here you have a 360 degrees a complete circle so this from here to here is the first turn continuing we have this half and another half so this is the second turn so you go here you find the third turn the fourth turn and half this last turn is half so you have one two three four and half so for this inductor you have four and half turns so if you have the value of the current and the inductance value you can calculate the generated magnetic flux so let's see how we find the equivalent inductance if they are connected in parallel so you have this inductance connected to another one let's say it's the inductance one two and you apply voltage like this this is the total voltage and a current will again be divided to the current in the inductance one and the current in the inductance two and again with when they reach this point they will divide in sum to result in the total current to return to the power source so we can see that the total current is equal to the current in one plus the current in two so if you isolate the change of current in this equation you will have the voltage in L multiplied by the change of time divided by the inductance value so to find the current because we need the current not the change of current we integrate these equations so the integration of di is equal to the i so that will be equal to 1 divided by l and the voltage and the voltage applied in the inductance integrated in time taking this equation to do here we find that 1 divided by l the integration of the voltage in time will be equal we do the same here because we have current 1 it's 1 divided by the inductance 1 and the voltage in the inductance 1 and this is the same voltage because they are in parallel so in time plus let me place it here 1 divided by the inductance 2 the integration of the voltage in time we simplify and we get 1 divided by L is equal to 1 divided by L1 plus 1 divided by L2 as this was the total current this is the total inductance so as you can see the total inductance in parallel is equal to the total resistance in parallel in equations and in series also so we know that inductor and capacitor does not work in DC because DC has no frequency so another important topic to talk about is the reactance and reactance is the opposition presented to alternating current by inductance or capacitance so when they are operating in AC they will oppose the passage of the current in the circuit so the capacitive reactance is defined as 1 divided by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by frequency multiplied by the capacitance value of this capacitor and this is given in ohms so let's looking at this circuit from A to B we have a capacitor XC and if you apply AC voltage from A to B a current will flow from A to B so supposing that the voltage applied is 220 volts AC 
and the frequency of this voltage is 50 Hz and also the capacitor is 0 0.002 Faradays the capacitive reactance will be equal to 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 3.14 this is the value of pi multiplied by 15 Hz multiplied by the capacitance value so this will give us a capacitive reactance of 1.59 ohms and calculating the current from A to B this is the voltage applied divided by the capacitive reactance so this will give us a current of 138.36 amps so can you see from here if you don't have a frequency if the voltage applied was DC this 50 will be 0 because the frequency in DC is 0 Hz so 1 divided by 0 will give you an infinite value so if you divide the voltage by this infinite value you will have a current approximately to zero so no current will flow in the capacitor when you feed the circuit with DC voltage the capacitor will only charge to the potential of the positive terminal so another reactance is the inductive reactance and the inductive reactance is equal to 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by frequency multiplied by inductance and this is given in ohms so if you apply the same circuit but with the inductor and we apply the voltage from A to B a current will flow from A to B if the voltage is 220 AC the frequency is 50 Hz and the inductance is 0 0.2 Henry's inductive reactance will be equal 62.8 ohms so the current will be equal to the voltage divided by the inductive reactance and substituting the values we obtain a current of 3.5 amps so supposing you apply a DC voltage uh, substituting in the reactance inductive reactance equation you will have here you will multiplying these to 0 Hz in DC so the total inductive reactance will go to 0 ohms so if you use this 0 ohms here and you divide the voltage to so 20 volts divided to 0 the current will be approximately to the infinite so this inductance will create a short circuit in the voltage source AB so this current will be an infinite value and we call this a short circuit current